Here I stand again, about to beat the band again. A talented actress, singer, and dancer, she went from reciting poetry in churches to becoming one of the top movie stars of the 1950s. In a time when most black actors were reduced to playing servants or embarrassing comic relief, she fought prejudice to obtain only the best film roles. And despite a turbulent personal life, she not only conquered cinema, but television and nightclubs as well. She is the one and only Dorothy Dandridge. Dorothy was born in Cleveland, Ohio on November 9, 1922 to aspiring performer Ruby Dandridge. Five months before Dorothy was born, Ruby took her first daughter Vivian and walked out on her husband Cyrus because he could not properly support them. As Vivian and Dorothy grew older, they displayed talents for singing and reciting poetry, so Ruby dubbed them the Wonder Children and they toured Southern Baptist churches. Though they added dancing, acrobatics, and impressions to the act, the Great Depression soon put a stop to the tour. Instead, the family moved to Hollywood, where the girls added Etta Jones to their group and changed the name of the act to the Dandridge Sisters. The trio made an uncredited cameo in the big broadcast of 1936 and followed up with other small film roles. Dorothy herself appeared unbilled in the 1937 Marx Brothers film, A Day at the Races, where she sang and danced amidst a large crowd in the All God's Chillin' Got Rhythm number. In 1938, their manager booked the act into New York City's famous Cotton Club, where they were a huge hit. They appeared on the same bill as the Dancing Nicholas Brothers. Dorothy caught the eye of Brother Harold, and the two began dating. Upon returning to Hollywood, the Dandridge sisters broke up, due mostly to Dorothy's desire for a solo career. She began taking bit roles in movies such as Sundown, a 1941 drama starring Gene Tierney and Bruce Cabot. Dandridge portrayed an African beauty purchased by a soldier who borrows some money so he can take her home as his wife. One of a Cuba. This maiden is old. It is our law that she may be bought for wife. Two men want, sir. Baruta is rich. He has plenty of money, plenty of cattle. He offers 100 shillingi. But Kipsang, only an Afghan soldier, he offers 120 shillingi. Let me see your money, Kipsang. You need a hundred more. Where is the rest of your money, Kipsang? The king will give me shillingi. I see. All the time, one of a Cuba. He said the king will give him shillingi. It's very simple. He wants an advance on his pay. If the king give you shillingi, you must pay back. That will take many moons. Why from the Never Never Plan? What? You'll be a poor man for a long time. A man who has a good wife, Barnum Cooper, is never a poor man. To have wife is good. To have Mutoto is better. Dorothy also appeared with another comedy team, this time Abbott and Costello in Ride 'em Cowboy. But again, her part was uncredited. This was a difficult time for black actors in Hollywood. Most of the available roles were either servants or embarrassing comic relief characters. Company, oh. one, two. Yeah. Gangway for Kid Zone. What you doing in that lineup? Don't bother me, woman. Can't you see I was a has-been? A zombie? Nothing else but. And don't ask me my name, because I don't know. I don't know nothing. But Dandridge dreamed of being better than that and steadfastly refused to take any stereotypical parts. Mommy and my papi are the dearest friends to me. If it hadn't been for mom and pa, I don't know where I'd be. Every night I thank my stars that I was born their kid. I know that you'll agree with me when I tell you what they did. They made me swing for my supper. Many times her film appearances consisted mainly of her popping up to sing a specialty number. Mama, 
mama said won't help to make you click. So they taught me, brought me up on good old arithmetic. Yeah! In September of 1942, Dorothy married Harold Nicholas, but the union was anything but happy. He liked to spend all his free time either on the golf course or with other women. Dendrich hoped the birth of their daughter Lynn in 1943 would draw them closer, but the girl was born retarded, which only kept Harold away more often. Depressed, Dorothy began to see a therapist. She and Harold divorced in 1949. With the help of arranger Phil Moore, Dandridge developed a nightclub act that painted her as a sultry and sexy singer. The act was a hit, but Dorothy hated touring the club circuit because of all the racism she encountered. In 1951, Dandridge took the role of a jungle queen in Tarzan's Peril, which featured Lex Barker as the Lord of the Apes. Once again, Tarzan's war cry rings through the African jungle, a daring challenge to the ominous rhythm of battle drums, beating a warning of danger as a ruthless jungle tribe, incited by international intrigue and duplicity, strikes terror and death upon peaceful natives who find themselves helpless and unprepared against an armed onslaught. At first, Dorothy didn't want to accept another stereotypical black role, but changed her mind because she found the script to be quite enjoyable. That same year, she appeared in the Harlem Globetrotters, which told the story of the famous basketball team. Dandridge played the girlfriend of one of the players. These smaller roles didn't seem to help her career, so Dorothy embarked on another successful club tour. The Colgate Comedy Hour. Starring Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. She was soon receiving offers to appear overseas and on television programs. With Dorothy Dandridge. This young lady is the, making her initial appearance in television tonight on our uh, Colgate Comedy Hour. And uh, we'd like very much for you ladies and gentlemen to wish her well with a nice, wonderful reception of lovely and charming Miss Dorothy Dandridge. Let's make her happy. Dandridge made her TV debut on an episode of the Colgate Comedy Hour. She performed the number, Blow Out the Candles. Flickering candles, silhouetted us, and all was still. Our voices were low, his arms crept round me. His soft lips found me. Then I whispered, dear, you got to go. Oh, darling dear, it's getting late. The clock has just struck one. I'll give you another kiss or two. If you promise, then you'll run. But first, Blow out the candle, blow out the candle, blow out the candle so the neighbors won't see, won't you? Blow out the candle, so there will be no scandal, and no one will know you've been kissing me. Darling, dear, time goes so fast. I know it's after two. <laughs> Gee, anyone can see you're a man with a past. My lipstick looks so cute on you, won't you? Blow out the candle. Blow out the candle. Blow out the candle so the neighbors won't see, won't 
year Blow out the candle So there will be no scandal And no one will know You've been kissing me Darling, I feel so helpless My resistance is gone, I see it. But before we snuff the last candle, tell me once more you love me, dear. So we blew up candle, blew up candle. We blew out the candle so the neighbors couldn't see. Yes, we blew up candle. To avoid a scandal That all at once Did we realize That the dawn comes up Like thunder And the sun shows Yes, the sun shows Yes, the sun shows Right in our From Television City in Hollywood, Ford Star Jubilee presents You're the Top. Later, she joined an all-star cast for the Ford Star Salute to Cole Porter. Louis Armstrong. This time around, she sang You Do Something to Me. You do something, something to me, something that simply mystifies me. Tell me, tell me, why should it be you've got the power? Hypnotize me, let me live neath your spell To do that, who do that, you do so well Oh, you do something to me But nobody else can do Dorothy obviously did something to audiences For they always gave her appearances a warm reception Here I stand again, about to beat the band again, feeling grand again, taking a chance on love. In 1952, MGM cast Dandridge in the all-black drama Bright Road, based on the real-life experiences of an Alabama school teacher. But there is another Dorothy Dandridge you haven't seen until now, a wonderful, emotional actress who brings to life on the screen the fascinating woman who captured your hearts in Mary Elizabeth Vroman's Christopher Award story, See How They Run. I'm Dorothy Dandridge. I play the role of the teacher. This was my first day, and I wasn't sure how it was all going to work out. This is Philip Hepburn, who plays C.T., the boy who never did see much sense in going to school. And this is Harry Belafonte, who plays the part of Mr. Williams, the school principal, who found C.T. the most difficult boy he'd ever known. But it wasn't punishment that C.T. needed. It was love, a love like Tanya's. And Tanya is played by Barbara Sanders. Of course, C.T. never let on that Tanya occupied a special place in his heart. Her co-star was the up-and-coming singer-actor Harry Belafonte. The two became close friends. One of the memorable highlights of this outstanding film is the simple yet wonderfully beautiful music of Harry Belafonte. Listen. Um, I pray my train will come Someday I pray my train The movie was a hit, and Dorothy was the talk of the town. She began dating again, having brief affairs with Bright Road director Gerald Mayer and actor Peter Lawford. Her next movie role would be the lead in the 1954 musical Carmen Jones. Incorporating the music from the Bizet Opera, the film told the story of a sultry vixen known for being a heartbreaker. 
Pal Harry Belafonte and singer Pearl Bailey co-starred with Dandridge, who had a brief affair with the picture's director, Otto Preminger. The film was a smash, and Dorothy received rave reviews. With a cast of show world favorites starring Harry Belafonte, Dorothy Dandridge. What's mine's yours, Joey. And that goes right down the line. You take us to Chicago, show us a good time. What we got to do for it? Don't ask him that now, honey. Let's get to Chicago first. See, run out on me. Sure. We can give you a better time than I can. That's a clue. Well, company, the whole works. Husky Miller's latest woman. Only that ain't the way it's going to be. With great songs and dances that the world will be singing and dancing to. Sensational song hits like... When your lover decides to fly, there ain't no door that you can close. She just picks you a quick goodbye and flicks the salt from a tail and goes... Not only did she appear on the cover of Life magazine as Carmen, but she found herself up for that year's Best Actress Oscar. Though she was the first black woman to be nominated in that category, she lost out to Grace Kelly in The Country Girl. Next, Dorothy was offered the role of slave girl Tupton in The King and I, but she felt the part was too small and turned it down. Rita Moreno took it instead and won critical raves, as did the film. Dandridge was disappointed and vowed never again to miss such an opportunity. My first independent production has just been completed. It is Island in the Sun, based on the best-selling novel by Alec Waugh. Oh, this is our Island in the Sun. Let me always hear soft guitars. In 1957, Daryl Zanuck wanted Dandridge to join his ensemble cast for the drama Island in the Sun. Dorothy Dandridge plays Margo, the exciting and alluring West Indian, and John Justin plays the governor's aide. Though Dorothy's plotline found her in a relationship with a white man, Dandridge felt the film did not take its controversial subject matter far enough. The pick was still a hit, but most critics agreed with Dandridge, who found the movie boring. That same year saw the release of Tamango, an adventure film set aboard an 1830s slave ship, captained by Kurt Jurgens. Dorothy played Kurt's mistress, who eventually joins a heroic African warrior's revolt against his captors. about you that I like. Nothing! No. I'm telling the truth to a white man. For the first time in my life. A far cry from the luxury liner he was leaving. Dandridge's next film, The Decks Ran Red, put the actress at sea on another ship, this one piloted by James Mason. A reckless woman among violent men, Dorothy Dandridge portrays the exotic Mahia. I suggest that while you're on this ship, you wear something a little less revealing. That well-stacked doll we got on board. We can parade her in front of these apes. She played the cook's wife, who enjoys coming on to the other sailors two of whom are planning to kill the captain and crew and take in the ship for salvage. In 1959, Samuel Goldwyn asked Dandridge and Harry Belafonte to star in the film adaptation of the George Gershwin musical Porgy and Bess. But most black actors hated the story, and Belafonte turned down the role immediately. Goldwyn's finest production of America's most acclaimed music drama, with more excitement heralding its coming than the world has ever known before.
Dorothy was afraid to make the same mistake she did with The King and I and chose to appear in the film. She ended up winning a Golden Globe for her role, which cast her opposite Sidney Poitier and Sammy Davis Jr. They tell all you chillin' the devil's a villain, but it ain't necessarily so. Porgy and Bess, the biggest screen thrill of our time, with all the incomparable magic that has made it a world favorite for the past 25 years. In her personal life, Dorothy had fallen for restaurant owner Jack Dennison, and the two were married. But Dennison was an abusive gold digger who treated his new wife so poorly that she turned to alcohol for solace. After two years, they divorced. Though Dandridge would appear in two more films, her career was faltering. With her financial situation bordering on bankruptcy, the actress continued to drink heavily and sink deeper into depression. While playing a gig on the nightclub circuit, she sprained her ankle and fractured her foot. On September 8, 1965, Dorothy was supposed to have a cast put on her foot, but she rescheduled her appointment so she could sleep in later. She was found dead later that day on her bathroom floor, completely nude except for a blue towel around her head. At first, officials thought she died from a blood clot caused by the fracture but it was later discovered that she had taken an overdose of an antidepressant. Whether her death was accidental or a planned suicide, no one will ever know. The only thing certain was that Hollywood had lost one of its most talented performers. In 1999, Halle Berry starred as the famous actress in the made-for-cable production Introducing Dorothy Dandridge. The film was a fine reminder of Dandridge's beauty, talent, and class as a performer. Breaking racial barriers, Dorothy starred in classic films that helped to elevate the status of the black actor. Hollywood will always remember Dorothy Dandridge. <laughs> 